recently revisited the AMD R9 290X from October of 2013, and now it's time to look back at the GTX 780 Ti from November of 2013. The 780 Ti shipped for $700 and landed as Nvidia's flagship against AMD's freshly launched flagship. It was a different era. Memory capacity was limited to 3 gigabytes on the 780 Ti. Memory frequency was a blazing 7 gigabits per second, and core clock was 875 megahertz stock or 928 megahertz boost, whereas we're nearing 2 gigahertz these days. And that also was using the old Boost 2.0 algorithm that kept a fixed clock in gaming. Overclocking was more extensible in some ways, giving us more control for an upward punch than modern NVIDIA overclocking, but the card, of course, has still aged. So today we're looking at how well it has aged, and we'll also have R9 290X numbers in there for point of reference. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. The 780 Ti ends up originally at about the price today that an RTX 2080 would be but the difference is a couple fold higher on the 2080. So you'll see that in some of our testing today. The design, uh, of course, was different, but things like the power envelope weren't too different from today's high-end cards. Of course, the difference being that for the same amount of power today, you get significantly more performance. The 780 Ti's potential biggest limitation in modern game testing is going to be its memory at 3 gigabytes of GDDR5. 7 gigabits per second isn't that slow, but most of the modern G5 cards are 8 gigabits per second, somewhere 9. G5X, you're at 10. And then for GDDR6, it's approaching 12, 14 gigabits per second, depending. So uh, quite a bit different there. But let's get into the benchmarks today. We'll have some additional testing notes in the article linked in the description below. As always, if you're curious what test platform we used, we'll go through the numbers. We have uh, Apex Legends in here as well, although that's the only game that does not have the 290X in it. And uh, then we can talk conclusions assuming anyone out there is still using a 780 Ti and wants to upgrade. Rather than our usual starting point of Sniper Elite 4 or Apex Legends, we'll start instead with GTA 5. This is a 2015 launch, so it's closer to the 780 Ti's 2013 launch than our other test titles. At 1080p and with very high and ultra settings with 2x MSAA, the 780 Ti still pulls its weight at 68 FPS average, with lows surprisingly well spaced at 50 FPS and 41 FPS, 1% and 0.1%. The 780 Ti therefore ends up just behind the 290X, with both of these being reference cards with stock settings. The modern GTX 1060 6GB Gaming X runs at 83 FPS average, outpacing the former flagship 780 Ti by an impressive 22%. The 980 Ti, remember there was no 800 series, ended up 47% ahead of the 780 Ti and was its direct successor. Generationally, the 1080 Ti also ends up about 126% ahead, or over two times higher in performance. It's sort of silly to use percentages at this point, so the takeaway is that 153 FPS average on the 1080 Ti allows graduation to significantly higher graphic settings or higher resolutions. Overclocking is completely insane on the 780 Ti compared to a lot of the cards today. It's fun, honestly, and that's what makes us miss the older Nvidia designs that were less locked down. With a 220 megahertz core offset and a 400 megahertz memory offset, we ended up at 83 FPS average, which is a massive 22% improvement over the stock 68 FPS average performance. This would be higher than the factory overclocked partner model 780 Ti's as well, so you get a full representation of the range here. You would have to overclock those further to get better than this. Overclocking gives us a more direct voltage control and clock control than modern generations, resulting in performance that matches the GTX 1066 GB nearly identically. The R9 290X overclocked to about 73 FPS average with its performance, allowing the 780 Ti to take a lead once pushed. Of course, a partner model 290X could theoretically push a bit further, but the 780 Ti partners would end up in the lead anyway, so it just does well in this game. For frame time consistency comparisons, the R9 290X ends up about 14 to 16 milliseconds frame to frame interval on average, with minimal deviation from one frame to the next. Frame times need to be consistent and should ideally not exhibit variance greater than 8 milliseconds to 12 milliseconds from one frame to the next. The 290X succeeds here and is acceptable in frame time consistency. The GTX 780 Ti plotting that next also does well, ending up functionally tied with the 290X. It almost completely obscures the 290X line, 
overall and has mostly equal performance for the actual player. There's one spike up to 33 milliseconds and then a corrective spike down, but beyond this single instance, the rest is about the same between the two cards. At 1440p, the 780Ti falls to 49 FPS average decline of 27% from its 1080p results. This also puts it as about on par with an R9290X 4GB card or an RX 580 8GB modern card. For reference, the 980Ti maintains a rough 47% lead here, so the relative scaling is about the same as at 1080p and a used GTX 1070 might be an affordable upgrade for you, although even a modern RTX 2060 at $350 offers a 63% performance uplift under these settings. Overclocked, the GTX 780 Ti ends up at a firm 60 FPS average, giving us a reasonable frame rate for actual gameplay, despite Lowe's struggling a bit. The overclocked FPS puts it at 1060 OC levels, with the 290X OC stuck closer to 51 FPS average. 4K wasn't even remotely common in 2013. This was far from the reaches of gaming GPUs at the time, as illustrated with the 780Ti's 25fps average at 4K. This is the sort of test that people likely would have scoffed at as synthetic back in the day, but today, even though the former flagship 780Ti and R9290X are roughly tied in their inability to play, it still takes a modern $500 card to reasonably begin playing with these settings. The RTX 2070 at $500 could absolutely be made to work with the settings reductions uh, to this title, although that may be undesirable for some. Overclocking the 780Ti gets it to 30 FPS average, which is still clearly not enough, particularly when considering the frame time performance is sporadic and places us at 13 FPS 0.1% lows, translating to frame time spikes upwards of 90 milliseconds. That means that sometimes you don't get a new frame for a full tenth of a second. Apex Legends is up next. We don't have as many cards tested here since we only recently added it, but the test gives a look at one of the most popular modern games that has come across our bench. Apex Legends uses the Source 2 engine and DirectX 11, building on top of the platform that Titanfall 2 laid out for it. This one omits the 290X in our results because it was tested previously and not retested, but will show plenty of 290X numbers following Apex Legends. At 1080p, the GTX 780Ti stock card runs at high settings with a 46fps average, allowing the GTX 970SC a lead of 40% over the 780Ti. Overclocking the 780Ti does allow it to gain an impressive 21% performance over its baseline stock performance, although this still isn't enough to top the 970. If you're looking to jump to another flagship, the 980Ti Hybrid operates at 80 FPS average stock, which is about a 75% increase over the stock 780Ti. The 1080Ti is a couple times higher in performance and is capable of 4K, whereas the 780Ti would struggle even with 1440p in this title. F1 2018 uses the Ego engine and offers a good look at other racing games made by Codemasters as they all run on roughly the same engine. F1 2018 also has some interesting quirks, like its desire for higher performance system memory, although that's irrelevant where we control for non-GPU variables. At 1080p, the 780Ti ends up at 59 FPS average with ultra-high settings. That's pretty good for a card this old and considering that the quality can be dropped significantly to maintain higher FPS if desired. Frame times are rough in this game in general, although not for Vega for some reason, but average FPS plants the 780Ti as below the 290X is 65 FPS average. The 290X also maintains better frame time consistency in this test path. Overclocking the 780Ti propels it to nearing 70 FPS average, approaching the GTX 970's performance. That's not particularly compelling performance when considering the tremendous step down that the 970 is from a flagship. Overclocking the 290X lands it at about 390X levels, unsurprisingly, since a 390X is functionally an overclocked 290X with some memory increases in capacity. At 1440p, the 780Ti runs at about 40 FPS average stock and 54 FPS average overclocked, which ranks it as comparable to a 390X or 290X stock card when the 780Ti has its overclock applied. The 980Ti holds a tremendous lead of 76% over the stock 780Ti, indicating that we may be running into some architectural limitations or maybe even memory limitations on the limited 3GB frame buffer that the 780Ti has. 4K has the 780Ti at 28 FPS average with an overclock barely improving frame rate. Frame time performance is dismal here, making this game unplayable with these settings. The 290X also struggles, although not to the extent of the 780Ti, but it's sort of irrelevant because they both really don't produce a good experience anyway at 4K. Far Cry 5 positions the 780Ti at 49 FPS average with our graphic settings, ranking it as between the 290X 58 FPS average and 960 SSD's 44 FPS average. Even the RX 570 outperforms the 780Ti, running at 59 FPS average and with consistent frame time performance. The 980Ti outperforms the 780Ti stock card by 78%, jumping to 88 FPS average from 49 FPS average. 
Overclocking the 7080 Ti puts it between the 390X and 290X stock cards, just for comparison. And at 1440p, performance falls to 35 FPS average, allowing the 290X a lead of 22% stock. That said, overclocking the 7080 Ti ties it up to the 290X stock and gets it close to 290X overclock performance, although the 290X reference card still maintains a lead. The 980 Ti can play this game reasonably well at 1440p, whereas the 780 Ti struggles without a graphics quality reduction, showing that the 980 Ti, if you could get a used one for cheap, might be a decent consideration for an upgrade. 4K performance has the 780 Ti at 18 FPS average, marking it as clearly unfit for 4K. Again, that's really no surprise, given the 4K market didn't exist in 2013 for the most part. Other old cards also struggle here, and even the 1080 Ti ends up technically below 60 FPS average, although it's close enough to make things work with a settings change. Sniper Elite 4 is the last one, and will only be tested at 1080p for this card. We normally also do 4K synthetics in this game, but we'll stick to 1080p for the 780 Ti in today's Sniper Elite 4 benchmark. Stock settings run the game at 73 FPS average, which ranks it as between the 960 and RX 570. The 290X runs 98 FPS average stock, and we should note that this game is more compute intensive specifically, so that's the specific reason why we see an advantage on these AMD cards like the 290X versus the 780 Ti. With the 780 Ti overclock, we end up at 88 FPS average to close in on the RX 570, but see that the 290X still holds a lead of 11% over the 780 Ti overclocked benchmark. The 290X climbs further with its own overclock, approaching levels of the RX 588 GB. If you're still using a 780 Ti today, first of all, congratulations on making a card last that long. It's a good one. It was a good card. It's still not bad, really, at 1080p. But if you're upgrading, uh, primary reasons for doing so would be increasing your resolution, maybe pushing the graphics settings a bit higher. But resolution is really the big driver there, where when this card came out, 1080p was it still is, but was a more domineering force in the market. Uh, 1440p was starting to kind of get some traction. 4K was just not in anyone's minds. Today, it's, it's quite a bit different from that. So six years ago, the same price for the 780 Ti would get you roughly a 1080 Ti, 2080 today. You'd be spending about $100 more probably. But the 2080 is a massive shift, of course. Radeon 7 is a competitor as well. We have notes on that if you're curious about its performance. But just strictly speaking, sort of NVIDIA flagship, 1080 flagship, well, today the flagship is $1,200, and that's the 2080 Ti. So if you're still in the same price range, unfortunately, you're probably not buying another flagship today unless you wanted to get the 980 Ti used, which is probably a pretty good price at this point, assuming you can find some in your region that are used. Uh, it's... A, a still significant performance uplift, in some cases 70 plus percent in average frame rate. But uh, if you wanted something new, then 2070, 2080, even the 2060 are all pretty decent upgrades and some of them cheaper than others. So uh, versus the R9 290X, both have, the, the 290X has aged better in some games, the 780 Ti has aged better in other games. You can look at GTA versus F1, for example. And where the 290X seems to do a bit better on average, would be games that make heavier use of compute. So if you're playing, for example, I believe Shadow of War or Wolfenstein 2, those are both pretty compute heavy. 290X would, would likely have a bit of an edge there, although we didn't test those two specific games. F1 2018 is another good example, though. So uh, anyway, that's it. The Sony ATI today sits closer to a 1066 gigabyte than just about anything else. Uh, sometimes it is even outclassed by an RX 570, again, depending on the type of game. So it, it has fallen quite far but it's still aged reasonably well. The 290X clearly has also really not aged that poorly. Uh, this particular model, not great, but the overclocks we did on it give you, and the 390X give you an upward upper uh, limit of where the 290X would have fallen in a very high performing scenario. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more as always. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to out directly, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up something like one of the uh, shirts I have right here, the disappointment shirt that's been modified to be a GPU artifacting shirt, commemorating the card that you might be upgrading to from this one. So that's not a great omen, but good luck. I'll see you all next time.